today on a special Faith Hunt edition of Fixing the Money Thing. You know, it's amazing in life that someone can watch someone driving a exotic, very expensive car and they'll just talk about the car, talk about the car, it's awesome, and not realize the car is just a car. What they should be asking is, look at that driver, he's awesome. They're awesome, she's awesome, because how did they get the car? You see, if we could understand how they got the car, instead of being just enamored with the car, we could all learn what they learn. What they should say is, I wanna know what that person knows to have what they have. How did their life turn out that way? Well, on Fixing the Money Thing today, we're gonna to talk about a principle that I guarantee can change your life. Jesus taught this principle, and if you follow it, I guarantee you can be the person in the driver's seat for your promotion and your life, right here on Fixing the Money Thing. On this special edition called Faith Hunt. The kingdom will totally, I mean totally, transform your life. There was laws I could learn to anchor my life. That's what Faith Hunt is all about. Hey, welcome to Nova Scotia. We're at Marguerite Harbor, Nova Scotia, and I wanted to bring something to your attention today that I think will help you a lot. These are lobster traps. And here in Marguerite Harbor, lobster fishing is one of the primary businesses, along with crab fishing, that happens here. They store the lobster traps because it's not lobster season now, and they'll wait till the early spring to go out again. But I want you to take a close look at these traps. I want you to think of the word specific. They are made very uh, intentionally with a specific purpose in mind. They're designed for that purpose. The lobster goes in to try to get to the bait and he can't get back out. Thus, they're called a trap because the lobster's trapped inside of this cage. The lobster fisherman comes along, pulls them up, takes the lobster out. But the lobster fisherman is a lobster fisherman. He knows exactly what he's fishing for. He has designed a very specific uh, utensil tool to catch the lobster. And I want to bring this to your attention because so many people don't have that specific place or method in their life to actually capture what they need. I want to read a scripture to you out of Luke chapter 5 to start our discussion. This is a discussion of Peter, James, and John, Luke chapter 5. We've I've taught out of this many times, but it says this, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gesenaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Now, you know the rest of the story where Jesus borrowed the boat and he said to Peter, go out and catch fish in the deep water, etc., etc." and they caught so many fish that the boats about sank. The point I'm making though is where I stopped and that is they were washing their nets. Now, obviously, nets that are unwashed will rot. And so Peter, James, and John had quite a story when both boats about sank, and the Bible says that the nets also began to break. Now, if they had not taken care of the nets, they would not have had the catch. Now, let me say this again. Even if the fish were there, and Jesus said the fish were over there, they're over there in the deep water, and they had not taken care of their nets, God did his part, but they would not have had the catch because their nets would have broken. So when I talk about this story, I want you to think of this word, preparation. You know, preparation is a huge part of success. So many people see success as something that happens suddenly out of nowhere, but they don't see the preparation that takes place behind the scenes when no one's looking. In this case, these lobster fishermen not only had to build these nets, these traps, they had to take them out and put them where the lobster were at. Now, there's a great parable that we can reference along these lines that I wanna bring about because I get so many emails from people that ask me, Gary, why, why I'm, not, I'm not prospering? And as I began to talk to people, I began to pick up why they're not prospering. For one thing, the, the email I get may be full of misspelled words and the grammar is atrocious. Well, I can tell right away that, okay, we got a problem because if you're gonna be in the people business, which all business is, 
communication is a vital part of it. And so one of the things you need to know is how to communicate. Now there's many other examples. For instance, not taking care of the nets, not knowing the business, not knowing what's involved with the business, not knowing how to have specifics in the business, not knowing how, what, what lobster like. I mean, there's so many things we could put into the story that could have caused a failure in this story and this story, but we need to talk about one called preparation. So in this case, knowing the habits of a lobster, where they live at, what they would be tempted to go into the trap after, what kind of food do they eat, what time of year is it legal to catch lobster, um, how deep, I mean, how much rope do you have to have to lower the trap down? How do you go catch the trap? How do you mark the spot with your GPS? What's a GPS? How do all of these things work? All of these things all come together for the success of the fishermen. In Peter and James and John's story, they all came together for their success. They were washing their nets. They knew how to fish. Jesus said over there, they followed the instruction. They carried out the plan and they caught so many fish, the boats about sank. It's quite a story. But let me show you something. So many people want to bypass preparation, especially in our day, our culture. You know, with the advent of uh, the internet, social media, web pages, YouTube channels. You know, people can put things that look bigger than they are. They can boost their image. They can claim all kinds of talents and not even have any knowledge of how to do what they're saying they can do. And no one can tell. You know, they can't tell because it's just a picture. It's just an image that someone put up for them to evaluate them by. And so we have to understand that there is something that has to be known. It's more than just saying this is going to happen or I'd like this to happen. There's some things you have to know. In fact, Jesus told a parable that warned us against trying to bypass the system. Yes, he did. I'm going to show it to you right here in Luke chapter 16. It's called the story of the shrewd manager. So let me tell you the story. We'll begin reading here in verse number one. Jesus told his disciples there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. Now you need to underline that phrase, wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. Now obviously the story, the manager is God giving the talents and abilities to people. And Jesus is using this story to illustrate our heart and intent, uh, how to serve the Lord. And here we find a manager who is wasting his possessions. He's not using them for the master's good. In fact, we'll find he doesn't even care about the master. As it goes on, he says he's gonna lose his position. He becomes disqualified. And the, the owner, the manager, I mean, the owner comes to the manager and says, okay, you're fired. You can't be manager anymore. And before the end of the week, let's say that you, you're going to be ending this position at the end of this week. The manager goes to people that owe his company money and say, hey, look, quickly, uh, just you owe me $1,000, write me a check for $500. We'll call it even. He'll stamp it paid. And the crazy thing is he's still stealing from his manager. He is lying to these people. The manager is taking upon himself to give away the owner's money without the owner even knowing it. Now, the owner hears this plot. And uh, so the manager thinks, uh, if I give this guy a break on the bill, he'll take care of me or he may give me a job later on. Of course, later on, that would be foolish of this client, right? This, this uh, supplier of, of the good. I mean, I mean, he's cheating the manager. I mean, he's cheating the owner. So anyone else that sees that happen would know, I don't want to hire this guy. But the owner comes to the manager with these very strange words after he hears what the manager is doing with the owner's clients. It says in verse 8, the master commends the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. He commends him because he'd act shrewdly. Now that means the manager had the ability to put together a plan of prospering, a plan of profit. He had the ability all along though, he wasn't producing profit for the owner. But now the owner sees him actually acting with a plan. He goes, wow, you're not, you have the ability all along to put together a plan to produce profit, but it wasn't for me. 
you catch that? The owner says, you have the ability to act with strategy and act with a motive to make profit, make things work well. But you didn't, but you did have the ability all along. You just chose not to do it. Then Jesus goes on, he says this in verse 10, whoever can be trusted with very little will also, can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Now, this is the key. If you can't be trusted with worldly wealth, you'll not be trusted with true riches. What does this mean? This is all talking about preparation. It's how you handle the worldly assignments, give you the ability, and you earn the qualification for spiritual assignments. This is, this is huge. So many people want God to choose them for the huge assignment. But if they've not been faithful with the small natural assignment, they are not qualified to handle the spiritual assignment. This means there are no small assignments in the earth realm. For instance, it goes on, it says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. So people, let's say that they have a job they don't like. And they're working at that job and they go, man, I just hate this job. I have such great plans. I want to do something so big. And, uh, you know, they'll try to line up at the time clock 15 minutes early or they'll kind of hang around, not actively engaged in their job, just thinking in their mind, this is just a temporary job. This isn't my life. I'm just working at this fast food restaurant because I need a few bucks for gas in the car and a few bucks to spend during the week. That's all they have missed the entire lesson. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna wander around for a while because they've not been qualified in the natural. When we come back, let's dig into that a little bit further because I believe this is a lifestyle change that must happen in so many people's lives with a different perspective of what they're doing to qualify them for tomorrow. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.